Hi everyone. Okay, we're going to make soap today. We're going to make silver needle rose tea. And this is a fragrance that I buy in from Scent Perfique here in the UK. They're one of my favorites, as I've mentioned before. Um, most of their fragrance oils don't accelerate in soap. You might find a few that might give a few little problems, but generally I don't have issues with these. So I always keep going back and they have the most amazing scents. They also have some really good dupes of designer fragrances. They do, um, they do stock a lot of the Penhaligons. Uh, dupes and I absolutely love that brand. So I go back to Saint Perfique quite often throughout the year just to restock things that I use all the time and then every now and again I'll try something new. But Silver Needle Tea isn't new, I have made it before. If you follow my Instagram you'll have recently, recently seen the pic from the last time I made it. This doesn't turn out quite <laughs> the same but next time we'll do it and we'll get it Get it right you'll see the mistake i made as to why i didn't get my swirl right but um yeah if you follow my instagram you'll see these upcoming soaps that i'm making because a lot of them are pictures i've posted from previous years that i'm trying to recreate so yeah okay so silver needle rose tea is like a really light tea rose with citrus a bit of cedar and then there's like a slight hint of a very light musk so it's not like a sweet um musty musk it's a it's a light fresh musk so it's just something that sort of like lies in the background but it's not predominant the main note in this is like a nice light tea rose so stay tuned you see how i made it oh yeah i'm just going to pour off my two colors a little bit more. I was having to watch back some of these videos yesterday because uh, I've forgotten how to make a couple of these soaps. Well, not how to make it, but what colours I put with what and I was getting a bit like, oh, I, don't, I can't remember what I did. <laughs> I'm just going to put my white into my bucket here. You won't be able to see this because uh, it's out of shot. You can just wipe that. That right, I'm using terracotta from Micah Mama. It's a really nice, vibrant red. I need to get some more because I'm almost out of this now. So, terracotta, and then I'm using forest gold, which is that one there. It's like a teal with like a sort of goldish sort of fleck, kind of. Just mix those. I'm going to stir those a minute off camera. There we go. And then just pour the white portion.
Take from underneath and bring it across the top just so that colour comes through as much as possible. And then I bring it back from the other side with this one. Like that. And again. Right, that's that made. So I'll be back for the cut shortly. And you see how that turns out inside. What I didn't do was a chopstick swirl. I forgot to run my chopstick through it, so it might just look like a bit of a, a drop swirl when we come to cut that, but that'll be alright. It won't be as pretty as I was hoping though, because I've forgotten to do something, but that's alright. We'll see. We shall see. You can always make it again. Okay, so that is Silver Needle Rose Tea, and I'll be back for the cut in a second. Well, yeah, next day. <laughs> I've just taken this out of the mould and just trimmed the sides of it, so here's the top. So we'll see if I got any kind of swirl inside there or not. So these are cut quite thick and they turn out about 150 grams. So there's a nice chunky bar, it's like 5.35 ounces. So let's see what we got. Keep a bit off the end. It's a lot softer than usual and I've done a water discount so I don't know why that is but it's actually quite nice to get the cutter through. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad for not having um, used a chopstick. It's actually created its own swirl. So that's all right, quite happy with that. There you go. There's not much of that green got down inside of this loaf. Maybe a bit more towards the middle. And the top didn't go quite as I wanted it to. I'd like to have a little bit more colour on the tops than I've got, but it's okay. It looks nice, but it's, um, yes, <laughs> more practice needed to get it to the design I had originally. And I've not made this since 2018, so it's look at that little face. Um, it's been a number of years since I've actually made this soap and done my tops. Sort of, well, I've been doing my tops like this for a long time, as well as the peaks, but yeah, it's been a long time since I made a lot of soaps this way. That's kind of cool. So, there we go. I'll just cut the last few. I've got another loaf to cut in a minute and I'll do that one off camera so I can just get this done because I want to get home in a minute and get this uploaded. So, I have some samples again. So yeah, it's not the best. It's not the best soap in the world, but it certainly smells good. <laughs> So there we go, silver needle and rose tea. And I'll be back soon with the next video. I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna start doing some sort of workshop videos so you can see a bit more of what's happening here and what I do all day. I think a lot of people think that soap makers don't do much. 
I think they think it, everything is a is on the we're all on a jolly, you know, and you don't actually have to do any work. Ah. I'm sure that's what people think half the time. They don't realise quite how much is involved. I suppose because it's a nice thing to do for a living, they think she hasn't got much to do. <laughs> anyway, I'll be back soon. The next soap. I'm not sure what I'm going to make. I've just taken a new delivery from Scent Perfect, so I'll be making some of the old ones again. So I'll decide which one, and I'll be back very soon. And I'll see you. Ta-ta.